Hello everyone. First of all, that's a lot of people. So the whiskey was needed. Uh, welcome to my talk, The Art of Compromising C2 Servers, a web application vulnerabilities perspective. Although, as we might see later, there is a better title for this talk. First of all, uh, this talk and this research is dedicated to a close friend and the father figure for me that uh, passed away three years ago. My friend Leonidas, who was one of the very few people together with my wife that uh, enforced me and helped me to switch from becoming a developer to from a developer to becoming whatever the hell I am right now. <laughs> so, thanks for that. Uh, I'm Vangelis Stikas. I'm currently the CTO at the trust and safety startup named Tremo and an independent security researcher. My research interests are mainly APIs for IoT devices and web application security. And I had the great idea that in my 40s I should also pursue a PhD on offensive web application security. You can follow me on Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called right now uh, on Evistikas. And this is my personal website where I usually post my latest research. The past uh, year or so, I have been uh, working on an AI LLM that uh, will generate some content-aware AI, uh, uh, content AI attacks. Uh, it will target logic flows and typical developer cut corners that we see throughout the years. And it, is, it was used in this talk. As you will see, it was not uh, that necessary, though. So. Uh, the question is why go after C2s and why go after malware? Uh, around a year ago, I was doom scrolling on Twitter when I saw a Tatiana's, Tatiana Siskova's uh, Twitter about uh, Harley, a malware, an Android malware that we're going to see really deeply later in this talk. And I was introduced to malware as a service and the wonderful threat the Intel scene that uh, tries to take them down. The malware market is booming. Malware vendors, as with anything uh, in late capitalism this uh, year, have switched to as a service model. So it means that uh, most of them need a monthly subscription which varies from a hundred to a couple of thousand uh, per year, per month and uh, some old ones still uh, have a once-off fee. On the malware development market, there is a, par a pyramid. On the very top, there are the developers. They are the people who develop malware and its functionality. They're C2, and uh, they can either be lone wolves or some uh, uh, market, uh, some uh, smaller uh, companies that have switched uh, bad. Vendors are on the middle of the pyramid. They are the ones who take most of the profits and offer advertise their goods on dark and marketplaces aggressively and uh, reach out to new customers so that uh, they can purchase their malware. And buyers are the final uh, cut. They are the ones who try to install the malware to the victims so that they can make profits of them. The malware market is booming. Right now, it's not ransomware size, but it's close to $2.2 billion for its profits. Uh, as you are going to see, all the malware have uh, strict uh, restrictions to never run in the Commonwealth of Independent States. For whoever don't know what it is, this is Russia. And uh, vendors are part of criminal rigs that enjoy immunity. And uh, that gets me to the actual title of my talk, which is, Will I Get Vant Today? A little intro on malware. It's, uh, it can be run on Android, Windows, and Mac. It can be delivered via a variety of methods. It tries to achieve persistence through a number of ways. 
it's usually heavily obfuscated and difficult to reserve, to reverse, and it connects to a C2 server for further instructions periodically. This is the part that we are going to take a deeper look into. Some malware lingo that will be used in this talk. First of all, Stealer, an application that will try to steal all information and send it to the command and control server. A dropper is the typical basic program that is used to drop other malware to the victims. A subscriber is an app that subscribes the victim's phone to a number of premium services. And if you don't know what a botnet is, you're probably on the wrong conference or looking of the wrong video. So, the typical malware analysis, what the smart reversers doing, is highly technical. Uh, usually they do static analysis, they are doing dynamic analysis in sandboxes, they're reversing and zapping through a lot of hoops. They fo uh, the focus on reversing raised the bar by a lot. And if you are here for reversing tips, I just have one slide, it's this slide, I don't really understand all of those things. So the potential obstacles that uh, the people who reverse and are really smart want to surpass is anti-debugging techniques, obfuscation techniques, runtime function decryption, states downloads, and a plethora of stuff that I don't really understand and I don't want to understand. So that's why I will introduce you to the Toyota Corolla of penetration testing, which is called web application testing. It's neither sexy nor nice, but it will take you from place A to place B, and it will probably also get you a couple of million bots in the process. So, malware command and control analysis. It's definitely not that technical. I'm going to treat the C2 as a black box web application test. If black box fails, I'm gonna cheat and use uh, some of the communication from the sandbox uh, that was running the malware. If all fails, mail. If all else fails, I will run it on my victim devices and just proxy through burp. And last, I will apply some art to it. And this is all the art that is needed to really own most of the C2s. It's just a typical DIR search. Yeah, I'm old. I'm not using FFUF. I'm not using DIR Buster. And that's the typical DIR search with the typical uh, vocabulary. Uh, there are a couple of uh, downfalls uh, for the C2 analysis. Uh, the most difficult part is that it is highly opportunistic because uh, they have a really small uh, life, which means that you have only up to a couple of days to attack and find any vulnerabilities. So it needs to be automated and integrated with threat intent tools to maximize the small window that uh, I have. And uh, you also have to surpass that uh, if you are using VPSs, uh, the bad people will also blacklist your IP addresses, so you have to continue changing VPSs. The thread intel that I was using is uh, mostly Twitter thread intel. Unfortunately, this is not lower, no longer working due to mask won into money buys over everyone. I'm also using Trias, Tracket, a Viribug, Threatbox Abuse, and a really nice uh, GitHub uh, from a Twitter user called uh, G7Worm. Uh, I, uh, the finished product was a Python script in a loop that updated a database of all tar targets. It scanned all targets for potential issues, or if it knew that there was an issue, it immediately exploited it uh, for a known vulnerability, as as I said, it's a really small time window. And uh, if a new panel appeared, uh, it would send a push notification on my phone. Spoiler alert, don't do that if you're married or put uh, limitations on your push notifications in the evening. The tools that I used, as I said, uh, my trustworthy Deer Search, Burp Suite, Jadex decompiler so that I could try to decompile some uh, Android stuff. 
I'm not that good, as I said, I'm a simpleton. Uh, APA, APK Lab.io and Teniran as uh, the sandboxes. Several droplets on this DigitalOcean so that I can avoid blacklisting. So then I also that I can find more uh, of the panels. And if all else fails, my cancerous Android phone that at some point was running 10 different malware. Going up to the methodology, it's as simple as it seems. Uh, I acquire the C2 URL and run automated tools. If the automated tools doesn't find anything, I run it in a sandbox and review the communication logs. I rerun the automated tools with added knowledge. And if that also doesn't find anything, I fire up Burp and uh, treat it as a penetration test. And last but not least, obviously not profit, but submit a DEF CON talk so that yeah, I can talk in front of you. What are the goals of my research? First, get the admin access to the panel, which means I want to be the admin uh, in the panel. Uh, get remote command execution on the server, acquire the source code of the panel and potentially the malware, and uh, the main thing, don't end up in a black van. How did it go? Seven panels uh, I got admin access. I got uh, three remote command execution on servers. Uh, I acquired the source code of five different panels and I still haven't ended up in the black van. I added the slide for the not honorable mention. First of all, it's Cloudflare. Uh, they never took down anything. They just enabled bad people to do bad things, and they never respect researchers, at least to my knowledge. Second is Hedzner, which never took down anyone. They took down my VPSs because they thought that I was doing something malicious, and... Uh, all the bulletproof uh, hosting providers for obvious reasons. So, enough with the fluffy words. Anything from here on is a zero day or a taken down botnet. So, let's go. First, it's uh, the Harley malware, as we saw on uh, Tatiana's uh, tweet. It was found by Kaspersky. The first report was on 22nd of September of 2022, which means they have a birthday coming up. Uh, they are extensively researched from Tatiana Siskova. I'm also going to introduce you with my meter. On the very right, uh, left, it's great, so I'm secure. On the very left, it's vant so I'm not really that secured. For Harley, I think I'm not so okay, but I can live with that. So, Harley is a Trojan subscriber to paid services. Uh, 200 apps uh, were found on 2022 and 2023. The realistic estimation is that over a thousand apps to this day have been developed, and they're affecting 12 million users. They are based on an encrypted SDK in Go and Rust. I'm going to spoil it to you. In a couple of slides, this is not going to be so encrypted. Oh, Harley had an administration interface which was based on Zoo Spring application. I hope we don't have any Java developers in here. If we do, I'm feeling sorry for you. Uh, I just checked on JavaScript and saw that uh, there was no actual backend verification. There was only frontend verification on the login. And uh, once the code was 200, it was adding, a, it was set item on Cision Storage, the username. So all I had to do was do a Cision Storage dot set item for an admin and I saw the admin interface, which, first of all, I hope the dog is a default one and not someone's dog, but this means that, I don't know. First of all, I'm the admin, first goal met. But as I said, we have other goals too. Uh, I don't know if anyone have worked with actuators, but uh, Dear Search found actuators. 
if you haven't worked with actuators, you're gonna know that they're leaky bastards. And I want to introduce you to Zolokia. Uh, Zolokia is the playground for remote command execution. Unfortunately, uh, the people who were behind this didn't pay for Zolokia, so all the commercial features were not enabled, which meant I had to find another way to remote command execution. I found a way to dump uh, via diagnostics uh, the virtual machine system properties, which you see a wall of text in here. Let me get it a little bit formatted. You can see that I acquired the secret access key and the access key for AWS and for Alibaba Cloud. Unfortunately, this was uh, not a root access key, but uh, it was an access key that was giving uh, me access to S3 buckets. And as you can see in here, this was a legitimate uh, web application uh, company that was uh, doing web applications. Uh, you can see the bucket that is really interesting in there. It's called Jenkins, and it has uh, a master key and credentials in there. So I just went to GitHub, found Jenkins Credential Decryptor. I decrypted all the credentials, and then I used it on that uh, company's uh, server that we're going to meet in a little bit. And yeah, all the... Uh, repos of the company were dumped. All malicious upcode was dumped. All the command and control uh, server code was dumped. It will be shared at uh, the end of this talk. I want to talk about the company behind it. It's called Star Pavilion. They're based in China. And their main product is a payment gateway, which is also providing uh, paid SMS services, like the one that uh, Harley is using. Second is Clipper, not to provide messaging. I'm going to say that uh, this is one of the benign, probably the most benign of uh, the applications uh, in this talk, so I'm safe. They were reviewed by a set. They were uh, reversed by the legend uh, that is Luca Stefanko and Peter Stricek. They are delivered as a Trojanized WhatsApp and Telegram messenger, and their sole purpose is to switch wallet addresses uh, from the one that uh, the victim is having to the one that the attacker is uh, controlling. Again, research. You can see that it found a lot of files. Uh, I don't know if anyone has worked with Laravel. I had the privilege of being a Laravel developer for enough years, so I know a Laravel when I see it. It's Laravel-based. The environment files are juicy files, and they are using uh, these files on every installation, which means that, as you can see in here, I had the app key. The app key encrypts cookies which means uh, that I can rebuild the cookie and log in as any user. And by any user, I mean, again, I'm the admin. But uh, goal one. Uh, it also found the readme.md. As you can see in, uh, in readme.me, there is an integrate with your tools and the GitLab uh, repository in there. I checked. Five minutes ago, this user is still online. You can go there and check his uh, repositories. That uh, repository for the C2 is unfortunately now deleted. Uh, everything is public. But uh, I have it, and it's going to be released in a bit. Those are all the people that have interacted with any of the repositories. I dumped all the malware-related repositories. Unfortunately, the Android application was already compiled. Uh, uh, it's going to be shared on my GitHub. I'm not going to pursue any for information for them as we have bigger fish to fry. OK, let's go on the big guns. This is Amade. If anyone knows what malware is, they know what Amade is. They are typically 15% of all the malware C2s on 2023. They surfaced on October of 2018. It's a typical stealer. They are sold in uh, Russian forums for 
between four and eight hundred dollars. They are usually used as a dropper, a dropper for other malware. Its source was leaked five years ago and today. And they have known connections to Lockbit TA505, TA5406, TA511, and I, I'm not exaggerating. I have just named four different APTs, so we're well within the VAND region, I hope you understand. What did I find? There, uh, my trusty dear search found astrayfiles.zip which was unfortunately password protected. It was cracked in less than a day by my good friend that is sitting there, Felipe Solferini. So I was able uh, to find the cracking uh, password and unfortunately I saw that they have a static login and password. So I started reading the code. I found a lot of SQL injections and I mean a lot, but unfortunately, uh, as you can see, the login has, uh, is checking on your configuration and it's not uh, uh, vulnerable to SQL injections. But then again, uh, you can see that there is really nice function which is called parse underscore credentials and it file put contents uh, on a uh, user-controlled uh, file name and user-controlled uh, content, which I had to check. There was some limitations. Uh, uh, the file name need to be exactly 12 characters, including the extension, and there was a delimiter that I couldn't have guessed, but I have the source, so I didn't need to guess. I then tried this really nifty postman with the really interesting ID of 1234567a.php, exactly 12 uh, characters, and this really nice uh, command, which is echoing a uh, word. And then I went to credentials slash 1 to whatever.php, and I saw this nice world. So, server, somebody's fucked, that's not me. What did I do from there on? I developed a reverse shell. I found an automated way of extracting everything in less than 30 seconds from the report of uh, all the intelligence to fully owning the website. I added this really sneaky cron job to corrupt the percentage of the files so that the people wouldn't know. Unfortunately, as of late June 2023, this is fixed. We're gonna find something though afterwards. From, uh, from December of 2022, more than a thousand instances uh, were found and exploited. More than seven million devices uh, were compromised and reported. This is a really not that nice graph, but you can see that per month how many instances uh, I got access to and how many victims I got access to. And we are getting to the really huge guns in here. Smoke loader is 20 to 22 percent of all the C2s that are being run this year. The first record uh, was in 2014. They mainly target Windows. Uh, there is a, this is a, they use it as a generic dropper for other malware. The price for full package is uh, more or less $1,500. Uh, they have no connections to Lockbit, TA505, TA406, TA, I don't know, whatever. All the APTs have worked at some point with Smoke Loader. So, yeah. I'm not feeling that good. <laughs> But dear search to the rescue again, I found a stray zip with credentials. The really sad part is that the admin username is millionaire and knowing how many bots he has, he probably is a millionaire by exploiting those. Sorry about that. But uh, after using the credentials, again, like, 
sounds really boring, but that's it. Really a scary picture, if you ask me. This is 25,000 pictures, 25,000 pages of 20 uh, PCs with all the information that you could have. You can see that they have admin access on most of those uh, PCs. This is one of uh, the C2s. You can see the old bot in there. That's half a million. The online is 20, uh, 250,000. And you can send uh, whatever you want and run it whatever you want as an admin. There is also a delete all bots and the cancel uh, bots deletion in there. I did not press it. I'm going to explain later why. I unfortunately did not manage to get RC. The source code is available. Minus the credentials, of course, as most of them are still active. Uh, all the shared malware uh, will be downloadable from Git. What could I do with uh, the knowledge I had in there? I knew the default uh, zip name of the source code. So when I upped my loop to use every minute, uh, I could find new references in thread model. That means that one out of five uh, of the new uh, C2s were vulnerable once I was quick enough. I was able to pawn 60 different instances. Uh, two of them had over half a million bots. Uh, a realistic estimation is that uh, over 10 million uh, unique devices were compromised. This is still open. The vulnerability is still a zero day. And you can see a nice graphic of uh, how the victims uh, went from uh, February till uh, now. This is why the next one is why DEFCON hate me. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be in here because uh, it was reported on late July, but I convinced DEFCON to accept it. It was revealed, it's named Manipulated Cayman. It's revealed and heavily reversed uh, and researched via Perception Point, which are th those three nice people on Twitter, OX Toxin, and two people that I cannot pronounce, sorry. It targets mostly Mexican victims. It's active for at least two years, and the potential revenue is over $55 million. I don't know. I'm not really scared of them, so yeah. After Smoke Loader, everything seems easy to me. The thing that uh, Perception or Point already found was that they have a Zanko uh, API that was open, so we could dump all the info from all the victims. That's how the 55 million uh, uh, were calculated. But I was mostly interested in a spamming uh, interface that uh, was found there, which is called C6. And this is what you see exactly, which means they have no authentication. So I don't know. I didn't really need to have an admin. Everybody's an admin just by browsing there. But <laughs> we, we also have other goals. Well, the other goal was rather easy. They have Git already in there. Dear Search found it. I was able to download all the files. This is where it was uh, the core of uh, at Bitbucket. Uh, unfortunately, it was not public, but I was able to replicate the Git from the files that were in the Git repository on the server. And I also found out that it was running uh, a really huge uh, Mexican, mo mostly Mexican uh, targeted spam list. This is already uh, shared with Troy Hunt on uh, Have I Been Pwned? And as you can see, it's a tad less than 34 million uh, email addresses. Due to time limitations, I was not able to get remote command execution. The source code will be available, minus the list, obviously, because I don't want to enable any spammers. Next is Nexus Panel. Their first appearance was in 2022. They act as an Android stealer. They have a, sophist a really sophisticated way of bypassing MFA. 
Uh, they target a lot of banking applications. They're mostly active in Turkey and they're inactive for the past two and a half months. So I say I'm safe, but you never know. Easy, uh, they have an SQL injection on how they submitted the files. So it means I'm the admin. Uh, they have a really sophisticated panel. You could see all the info of all the users. Uh, the SQL injection could dump uh, the full database. Uh, they had clear text passwords. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, while I was researching, they went uh, off. So I wasn't able to get any code or RCE. And unfortunately, we, there is no panels available. So I have to say that I didn't manage all goals, unfortunately. And then it's the one that got away, Aurora. I had a really big speech on what Aurora was and what it where it was supposed to be doing, but uh, the day before yesterday, Titan Stealer, which is basically Aurora 2, got its uh, code dumped, so Good for them, I guess. Their first appearance is early 2022. They're a window stealer. They are uh, right in a Golang. They are capable of stealing uh, a lot of crypto wallets. And the panel was uh, written in Golang. They are off, so I'm great. I don't, I'm not afraid of them. Uh, the story is that the Deer, Deer Search found a stray image loading advertisements. I followed the lead. I found the base building server uh, handling all builds and licensing. You could add the user, you could create stealers, you could do whatever you want because they had no authentication at all. The only thing that you needed to find was the actual URL and port that it was running. And then this happened. Uh, Aurora and their, use, and their admins went uh, silent. They deleted everything. So again, I wasn't able to finish what I wanted to. And there comes the ethical slash legal dilemmas. I vastly dislike the word ethical hacker. I'm an ethical person, but uh, that has nothing to do with hacking. I deliberately, in this research, didn't touch any machine that was not owned by criminals. And that's the line that I wasn't happy to go over. So all my research took down only people who were criminals. Criminals will get better. Uh, the C2s will get some focus too. I hope some of you here, you can see how easy it is to own command and control servers. It, it has nothing to do with the really, really difficult part that is reversing applications. The bar will be raised, and uh, I'm expecting all the zero days that are reported today to be fixed in the next week or so. And uh, this could interfere with active police investigation, but all of them were reported six months ago, so I cannot really do anything else. What's the next steps for me? Uh, I will continue monitoring for new panels. I will try to find more zero days on all the panels. Uh, I will try to collaborate with a lot of researchers to identify and take down criminals. And my main goal is to continue my 40 years of don't get van strike. I was really uh, not expecting for so much traffic in DEF CON. So the GitHub is live. My blog post is going to be live later this week when I'm hopefully back in Greece and have some time to finish it up. So keep, I will keep you posted. But you can go to github.com slash tix slash DEF CON 31 and acquire all the C2 and the malware source code that is available right now. Thank you for attending the talk. I think we have time for questions if anyone feels like it.
Yeah. None. I have reported to Europol, but they didn't even answer. I also have to say that I reported to the company that was doing Harley. They didn't answer either. Any other questions? Thanks, guys.